You are God's creature, designed for glory. You are not designed for shame. Returning back in Jesus' name, I rebuke the devil. God is a God of mercy. When you understand that God is a God of mercy, you are a creature of intention. God created you intentionally. Get set for a moment of empowerment with your host, Benjamin Beckley. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas, USA, welcoming you to Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. Thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast today. I appreciate your time. Thank you for all your calls, your prayers, your encouragement, all the support. And thank you also for commenting as well as sending this to your friend. The Lord bless you and the Lord continue to keep you. My prayer every time is that God will continue to use this broadcast any day, any time to be a blessing to you. God will use this broadcast to shift you up, to lift you up, to enlarge your coast in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Moment of Empowerment is a revelational and prophetic broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. God is a God of plan. God is a God of purpose. One of the purposes for which God has created man is for him to be on the earth, be a solution provider, add value to the earth, and make something impactful upon on the earth. And that's why when God created Adam, God put him in the garden. God did not just create Adam to be wandering around. He created a garden for him, and he put the man in the garden to keep and to till. That is Adam. And God also created you, placed you on the earth to add value to the earth. There is an assignment for you on the earth. There is a purpose for which you are on the earth. And you need to be empowered in order to fully manifest in this your place. My prayer today is that God will use this broadcast as an eye opener for you. To open your eyes to discover who you are, what you have and where you should be in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Now, I'd like you to do me a favor. Call a friend, call your neighbor, get the family together, because it's time to connect with God's word that is able to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. But right before we go into God's word today, I'd like to invite you to the Empowerment Center. The Empowerment Center is a non-denominational, multicultural, word-based, loving church of God that is dedicated and committed to empowering lives for destiny fulfillment. You can be a part of any of our life-transforming services at the Empowerment Center. On Thursdays, we meet 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and on Sundays, we meet 10 a.m. to 12 noon. The address is right on the screen. You can call the address. You can call the number also if you need direction. And if you need prayer, please do call that number. We are sent to be a blessing to you. And surely I know that as we agree with you in prayer, testimonies abound. And you are the next in line for the testimony and the miracle in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I look forward to receiving you this Sunday at the Empowerment Center. Come, let's glorify God together. Come and encounter the person, the power, and the presence of God that will turn things around for you for better in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, in case you are just tuning in, this is Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I'm your host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas, USA. Now, today... I'm going to continue the series that I started in the last broadcast that is entitled, Make the Best Use of Your Life. Make the Best Use of Your Life. In the previous broadcast, we have discovered that your life, my life, and everyone that God created, their life is a valuable asset. 
And now let me show this to you. Your life is so valuable that God looked for all ways to redeem you from the hand of the devil. And one of the things he concluded to do was to use another life that did not sin. And not just another life, his own life. Because that was his only begotten son. All because of the value that your life carries. Jesus came to die and to bear the pain on the cross. He also resurrected all because of the value that God has placed in your life. I want you to know your life is valuable. No matter what pain, shame, error, mistakes, and reproach you are passing through, don't let your circumstances determine the value of your life. Oh, glory to God. Your life is so valuable to God that God said, even that he said, the son is the only one that can redeem us. The blood of goat and the blood of cows cannot redeem us from sin. And he sent Jesus to come and take your place, take my place, so that the value that God sees in us can manifest. But however, this is the challenge. What you don't value, you will cheaply lose. And until you place right value on your life, it cannot deliver to you in volume. It is the value you place on your life that determines the way you live your life. And it is the way you live your life that influences the place you will end in life. You can either end in glory or you end in shame. You can end in glory in, in, in honor or you end in dishonor. You can end in great place or you end in the low places of life. It's all a function of the value you place upon your life and the way you live your life life. We discovered in that edition of the broadcast, looking at Revelation from the story of the prodigal son, that our choices and our decision affect our chances and our destination. We also discovered that when you waste what you have, you will end up living in the waste place of life. We discovered in that edition also that there is always a decision that precedes promotion in life, there is a decision. In case you missed that edition, you can go on the website, www.wordrevival.org. You will see on the website where you can watch a rebroadcast of all the past edition. The website is there on the screen. You can just go on it, go on the website. You will see Watch Empowerment TV broadcast, and you can watch a rebroadcast of all the previous editions in case you missed that. Now, today, we are going to continue in this series as we explore some of the things that are necessary for us to make the best use of if we are going to make the best use of our life. If you will make the best use of your life, there are certain things that are very important that we master. There are many, but I just want to share some of them with you. That when you master the use of these ones and you use them in the best possible way, you can make the best use of of your life. But right before I go into that, I want to share a case study with you and just to prove to you that it is possible to make the best use of your life. I've shared over and over again that your life is a valuable asset. We discover that your life is God's gift that is given to you for the advancement of the earth. Your life is God's gift. We saw also that life has no spear. You got only one life. And that is more reason why you have to use it the best possible way. I know someone is watching me. And it's like, the life you've been living has not been worthy. It's not worthwhile. It's been a life that is full of ups and downs. A life of sorrow. You are even condemning yourself. Asking yourself, why did I do this? Why did I do this? Why did I get myself involved in this? And I want to let, let you know it is not over. You can pick up from where you are. Don't allow the present circumstances of life to determine the kind of life you live. Don't submit yourself and your life or the value of your life to the demand of the present circumstances. Listen, your life is valuable no matter what it is filled with. It may not look valuable to you, 
because you have been beaten, you've been wounded, you've been battered, you've been offended, or because you don't see. But that doesn't mean it is not valuable. God sees it. Jesus came all because of you, and that is just because there is value in your life. When you look at the story of Joseph, this was a man that was full of dreams. He started out his life with dreams. He had a dream of greatness. God showed him the value of his life. And he began to value his life from that moment forward. He saw himself on top. Dreams, people bowing down for him. He saw himself in a place of greatness. But lo and behold, because of envy, because of hatred, because of jealousy, his brother sold him out to slavery. In Genesis chapter 37, verse 18 to 20, the Bible says, And when they saw him coming from afar, before they, he came closer to them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said, Behold the dreamer coming. Come therefore, let us kill him, and we will cast him into the pit, and we will say an evil beast has devoured him. Then we shall see what will become of his dreams. We shall see what will become of his dreams. So I concluded that their problem was not really the person of Joseph, but their problem was the value on Joseph. Glory to God. Their problem was the dream that Joseph had. We shall see what will become of his dream. We shall see if he's going to step into his place of greatness in life. I don't know if you are watching me now and who you are. That is like, this is the question that the life has been asking you. We shall see how you will be all that God wants you to be. We shall see how you will end up becoming great. But I have come to announce to you, regardless of how life has been treating you, you surely will become all that God has designed that you will become. You will be the best that God has designed that you will be. You will get to where God has ordained that you will get to in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So at this point, it looks as if his dream, his value has been corrupted. How will he eventually become great in life? How will he live the best of life? When they sold him to slavery, he woke up to realize that he had been in a strange land. I know one way or the other he will have questioned himself. What kind of life am I living? I had a dream I'm going to be great. But look at where I am, I'm a slave. How can a slave end up becoming great? The questions will have come from far near center. His mind will have judged him that there is no more way for you. His mind will have told him you are condemned. The dream can no longer come to pass. But thank God for Joseph, a man that did not allow his present circumstances to determine the value upon his life. I saw from the scripture that even though he was in a strange land, he still lived his life the best way. He made the best use of his life. We saw from there that in a strange land, he found himself, but he maintained discipline. He maintained diligence. At a point in time, he was set up by his master's wife. He was put in prison because he refused to waste his life by fornicating with his master's life. He made a decision not to waste his life. He made a decision to stand with God. He made a decision not to miss out of what God has for him. Even though he was not sure if the dream would still come to pass. And I know I'm driving towards somebody. I'm driving towards somewhere. You might have been that person that you used to have a value, a high sense of value that my life is worthy. My life is better. My life is glorious. But things started happening to you. The unexpected things of life, the unexpected waves of life gathered together against you. And you're at the point now you say, there is nothing coming out of my life. Can anything good come out of my Nazareth? How can I still make the best use of my life? But look at Joseph. Even when it looks as if the value is eroded, he still makes the best use of the life he had. Even if where you are now, you are in the place of failure, you can still make the best use of that life in the midst of failure. You can be in prison and all hope is lost. You can still make the best use of that life even when you are in prison. You can still bring something good out of your mess. You might be in a serious mess right now, but your message can come out from your mess. You might have been wounded, 
You might have been abused. You might have been wrongly used. But if you concentrate on the situation and not place right value on what God has said you have, you will not be able to bring the best out of your life. Now, while in prison, he was still valuable. He has this sense of value. It is not over yet. And he still made the best use of his life. He maintained the attitude of adding value to other people's life. In Genesis chapter 40, verse 6 to 8, Joseph was in prison. He had no idea if the dream is still going to come to pass. He didn't know if there is any value left. But yet in prison, he was still adding value to people. He was still asking, what is happening? Your face is not smiling. And they said, we had a dream. Oh, glory to God, you had a dream. What is your dream? He interpreted the dream for them. He added value to people because he has a sense of value that he has been sent as a solution provider on the air. No wonder, at the end of the day, he ended up becoming a governor. Even in a land where he had served as a slave, in a land where he had been imprisoned, in a land where he had been lied against, he ended up becoming a governor. I believe all these, apart from the grace of God, is because he made a decision to make the best use of his life. No matter where he found himself, he made a, de he made a decision to make the best use of his life. He found himself as a slave. He made a decision to make the best use of his life. That even in his place of work, the master handed over everything to him. While he was in prison, he made a decision to make the best use of his life. He will have wasted his life. He will have become someone arrogant, someone without no more value. He will have told himself nothing good can come out of my life any longer. So there is nothing worth living for. But no, he made a decision to make the best use of his life. Even if all you have left is a remnant, you can still make out the best out of it. And at the end of the day, he rose up to become a governor. I pray for someone today that your life has been messed up. You have come to a point of failure, a point of frustration. I pray with you today in the name of Jesus. The best in you is coming out in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I discovered these three Ds in line with the story of Joseph that made him to make the best use of his life. Number one, discipline. He disciplined himself. Number two, diligence. He was so committed to work. Number three, he developed himself. If he developed himself so much in the usage of his gift and talent, he developed himself that his gift made room for him in the palace. I want you to know, if you will make the best use of your life, you need discipline, you need diligence, and you need to develop yourself. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to continue in this teaching, and I'm going to be sharing with you some things, I believe, that if we can master the best use of these things, we can make the best use of our life. But right before I go into that, I want to share with you my, one of my best-selling books, I want to introduce you to this book. It's going to be a blessing to you. This book is entitled, Help from All Sides. It's a book that is full of revelation and prayers on attracting help from all sides. It's a book loaded with revelation on what help is, how do you connect with help, how do you break the hindrances and the barriers to help, and also contains diverse points of prayers in all fears of life, scripturally loaded. You can get the book either in print version or the ebook version on Amazon.com, or you can also call the number on the screen to place an order for your copy. It will be a blessing to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go back to our teaching, make the best use of your life. You can make the best use of your life by becoming the best, Make a decision to be the best, even if you are serving in any capacity. Make a decision to be the best. Look forward to advancing the air. Look forward to ways you can bring out the best that is in you. You are not ordinary. You are more than this. You have been loaded with treasures in ethan vessels that the excellency of the glory and power may be unto God. Now, let me share some things with you. If we can master these four things, as part of many other things, and we make the best use of these four things, we can make the best use of our life. Number one is our time. Yeah, our time, your time. 
time is life. A wasted time is a wasted life. You see, time is the currency of life. The events of life, they are embodied in time. It is the usage of your time that influences the usage of your life. If you waste your time, you are automatically wasting your life. A time wasted is life wasted. If you check your life at this point, and you do a stock of your life and the way you've been spending your time, what do you spend your time on most? It's a pointer to where you will end up in life. You need to check what you invest your time on. You need to check how you spend your time. If you will make the best use of your life, then you need to make the best use of your time. Make the best use of your time by redeeming the time, by connecting with things that will add value to you. Spend your time on things that are value adding. Don't spend your time in the midst of gossipers. Don't spend your time just watching movies. Fine, it is good. But if it does not add value to you, you will end up becoming what you spend most of your time on. I'd like you to understand. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 16. The Bible says we should make the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Time is an essential instrument. It can be wasted. It can be invested. So we need to make moves on how to make use of our time because time waits for no man. If you are such a person that procrastinates a lot, you shift responsibility. I'll do it next week. You do it next year. You are sleazily, little by little, wasting time and wasting life. Some things you ought to have achieved last month if because you did not make the move you needed to make last month, they are still there pending, unachieved. You are not making the best use of your life if you are not making the best use of your time. I'd like you to know, number two, that we must make the best use of, if we are going to make the best use of our life, is our thought. Your thought. Your thought goes a long way to determine your destination. Why? It is your thought that drives your decision. And it is decision that determines destination. Thoughts drive decision. Decisions determine destination. It is as you think in your heart that you act on the head. I'll say that again. It is as you think in your heart that you act. You practice it. You take action on the earth. So if you are not thinking thoughts that will make you use the best use of your life, you will also be make acting out on the earth actions or moves that will not allow you to make the best use of your life. Let me tell you some things about your thought. Number one, you are a product of your thought. Every man, every woman, you are a product of your thought. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what you will become is a product or function of what you consistently think about. So if you will make the best use of your life, you want to fill your thought with things that will bring out the best in you. I want you to know. Until your thought changes, your life cannot change. If you want to change your life, you need to change your thought. If your thought is corrupt, your life cannot operate against it. Because every man's life follows every man's thought. Therefore, to make the best use of your life, we need to make, you need to make the best use of your thought. What do you think about? Are you always thinking about committing things negatively? Are you always thinking about the negative things of life? Are you always thinking about what has passed you by? Are you always thinking about committing negative acts? Those things will drive you out of the best of life. But to make the best use of your life, you need to make the best use of your thought. Make the best use of your heart. Think thoughts. Look at what the Bible told us to think about 
as a suggestion. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on things that will bring good report because your life goes in the direction of your thought. Number three thing, I believe if we master them and use them rightly, we can make the best use of our life, is your association and your relationship. Your association and your relationship. Association can directly or indirectly affect your manifestation in life. When you walk with the wrong people, you will definitely put yourself in the wrong condition. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Bible says, do not be deceived, because evil companion always corrupt good manners. The Amplified Version put it this way. Evil companionship, communion, association, corrupt and deprive good manners. So make the best use of your life. Make the best use of your relationship. Choose your friends wisely. Work with the people that will challenge you, challenge you, and advance you. Make moves in the direction, build relationship with people that are there. Go into the same place where you want to go to. Because the Bible says, he who works with the wise is going to be ending up becoming wise. But a companion of fools shall be despised. Who are you working with? What company are you keeping? Somebody said, the company you keep is what determines what will accompany you. I pray for you today that every association that is hindering you from making the best use of your life, God separates you from them today in Jesus' name. And finally, the final thing I believe you've got to make the best use of is your health. Make the best use of your health. The state of your health affects your place on the, on, on the earth. Make the best use of your health. If you are sickly, you cannot make the best use of your life. Make the best use of your health. Make the best use of your health. Keep fit. Stay strong. Don't feed yourself with the things that kills your health. Stand where God wants you to stand. And you'll definitely become all God wants you to become. I know you've been blessed by this broadcast. The all thing I'm handing over to you today is that you can make the best use of your life. No matter where you are. No matter what you have. Make the best use of your gift. Make the best use of your talent. Make the best use of anything you have right now. Till I come your way again next week, stay empowered. And I want you to stay empowered and keep empowering others because God loves you and God bless you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Watch us every week at the same time for your moment of empowerment. Visit us online at wordrevival.org or call us at 972-639-639. 1762 or stop by and see us at 838 Secretary Drive, Arlington, Texas.